The 1990s had the siege of Sarajevo. The 2000s had Grozny. Today, we have the fall of Aleppo. The end seems near for various rebels, uh, factions, with civilians now fleeing by the thousands, possibly the tens of thousands. With virtually no independent journalists uh, left in East Aleppo, we're left with uh, competing claims of ethnic cleansing by Assad's victorious forces and residents of East Aleppo held hostage by radical fighters. There are many reasons to fear both of those stories may be correct. So whose victory is it? With support from Russia, Iran, all of its proxies, how many fighters on the winning side are actually Syrian? While all eyes were on Aleppo, what does the retaking of Palmyra by ISIS say about the Syria of Bashar al-Assad? What started in Syria in 2011 as a cry for civil liberties has long since morphed into a brutal sectarian power play. What scars then? What scars for Syria? What scars for its neighbors? And a West that went half in, and a Russia that could get bogged down. Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at the fall of Aleppo. With us from Beirut, the Guardian Middle East correspondent Martin Chuloff. Welcome back, Martin. Good to be with you. From Manchester, Peter Ford, he was UK ambassador to Syria from 2003 to 2006. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. We're also uh, in the presence uh, from uh, San Francisco, another former ambassador, former US ambassador to Syria, uh, Robert Ford, today with the Washington Institute. Thanks for joining us. Hi, good morning. Uh, good evening here. Good morning in San Francisco. And we yeah. say hello as well to Syria commentator Emma Suleiman. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. The France Fan Get to Be, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24 Debate. This time it really does look like the end. Syrian rebels withdrawing from six more neighborhoods in their one time bastion of East Aleppo. This in the face of advancing government troops. That's according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Uh, among the neighborhoods evacuated, Bustan al Qasr, uh, once one of the most fortified districts under opposition control. Martin Chuloff, have you had any contact with people inside of Aleppo this Monday? We have done some speaking to people over Skype, uh, very briefly, uh, and also over WhatsApp messaging. Uh, we'll send a message, uh, a voice message, and they will reply. Uh, it's a desperate time for them. Uh, they, don't, they don't want to sit around and talk too much, obviously. Uh, the conversations that I've been having with people that I've dealt with for many years, today and yesterday, have been more or less goodbyes. Uh, those who are, are surrounded in the southeast of the city don't think they're going to make it out. So it's, it's the end of a, a long and arduous journey for them. Uh, it's, 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 it's been bittersweet at times. It's tragic now for them. And it's, uh, it's, it, it certainly uh, marks a moment in time. We're talking a matter of days before East Aleppo does fall. You say goodbyes. Uh, it, 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 can you explain? Martin Shuloff, when, you, when, you, when those people saying it's goodbye, uh, w w they, they believe that either way uh, they, they're going to meet uh, a tragic end? Yeah, they, they seem to be resigned to their fate um, after a, such a long process of, of digging and of fighting, of, of being besieged. Uh, they, they are surrounded now, and they are surrounded by a, an enemy that is capable of actually getting to them. And that's the, that's the difference. For the last two or three years, where, where the siege has intensified at times and, and dropped away. But ever since July, those doing the besieging from the east of the city are very formidable strike forces led by uh, the uh, Iranian proxies uh, from Iraq and, and from Hezbollah. The Syrian military, of course, is involved, but they aren't the frontline forces. And these are the forces that, that those uh, who are being besieged now do, do fear. They, they have been bombed in, into submission. They don't have any morale left. They've got very little food and very little ammunition. So there's not much to withstand the inevitable. And the victors taking no prisoners? Well, there, there have been prisoners taken at checkpoints and elsewhere. They're, also, and they're mostly military-age men. Uh, there have been, it must be said, uh, children and, and older men that have been allowed to cross into West Aleppo, along with, uh, with women and uh, and. And, and the elderly. So, but but there is a, an issue with uh, military age men. I can I can vouch for about 500 to 700 who have been taken at checkpoints. Uh, we don't know what their fate will be. Uh, the uh, it seems to be some form of uh, 
uh, detention out near the airport in the east of the city. But by and large, those wanting to flee the city into the west have been able to do so. Emma Suleiman, what are you hearing? I mean, what I think is so sad today that we are unable to secure the evacuation evacuation of civilians, despite all these meetings and uh, and all these huge diplomatic efforts, we are unable to in, to ensure the safe evac evacuation of uh, of civilians. Uh, uh, however, what I think uh, back again to uh, I would like to comment on calling this victors or victory. There is I think this is made uh, this term is used by media and by, by the Assad regime and his supporters, uh, his backers, such as uh, Putin, to make, to make this sound as a huge victory and a breakthrough. It's def definitely not. It's not an accurate term. Because this conflict started uh, uh, by people who rose against uh, um, a dictated regime of 40 years old, or now 46 years old. Uh, this victory uh, might be, uh, this military victory might be temporary, okay, might be, uh, I mean, there was there was such victories before in Madaya, in Zabadani, in Dareya, and, and in many parts. Today we're talking about Aleppo, tomorrow we'll be talking about Idlib. I cannot consider this as a victory as, as long as the war is still going on. Uh, the, yes. No, I was just going to say two points on what you're saying. Let, let's first address the first one, because I think it's super important. And I, I'll, I'll bring you in for this, uh, Peter Ford. When you hear Emma Suleiman saying it's tragic that uh, more can't be done to uh, secure the safe passage of civilians, can more be done? Uh, look, uh, in the last uh, four days, approximately 80,000 civilians have found safe passage. Uh, is this being airbrushed out of the picture? Um, safe passage is being offered by the, the government forces. Uh, it's the rebels who are mainly holding back those few thousand who remain. But let's remember that 98% of the city of Aleppo is now in the hands of government forces. And many thousands of uh, the inhabitants of Aleppo are now thanking God for their salvation and their delivery from the hands of these hostage takers. Uh, families are being reunited. People have access to food. The ordeal for many thousands of uh, Aleppoans is, is over. And it's only because the remaining hundreds of fighters have spurned offers of safe passage that the remaining thousands are still unable to leave. Robert Ford, do you share that analysis? Uh, I think the analysis is not as simple as uh, Peter Ford would suggest. There are conflicting reports about whether or not the majority of uh, civilians refuse to leave because they are afraid of the regime and the regime's treatment of people, or if the remaining rebels are actually blocking uh, the uh, departure of the civilians. Um, what we do know is that at one point, the rebels uh, in the last five days um, suggested in talks in Ankara uh, with the Russians uh, that there be some kind of an arrangement, a ceasefire, um, and the departure of civilians. And that was something which the Russians refused. I think it's important to remember the nature of the Syrian regime. Um, they uh, detain people on the slightest suspicion. If you are lucky, you are conscripted immediately into the Syrian armed forces. Um, and if you're not lucky, uh, you can be detained by secret police, one of the four secret police agencies, um, each one worse than the other. Um, and that includes women and children. And we have seen that just from the pictures that were brought out of the Syrian military defense detention facility uh, by a Syrian defector uh, three years ago. So don't forget the nature of the Syrian regime. And, and can more be done? I'll put the question to you, Robert Ford. Can more be done to ensure that safe passage? You talk about that Russian refusal. 
uh, 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 when it comes uh, to uh, the, the rebels moving out. Uh, what are you hearing about the nature of the conversation that has been going on between the U.S. and Russia over the weekend? Well, the talks went nowhere. Uh, Lavrov today, the Russian foreign minister Lavrov, said that uh, talks had reached a dead end. Frankly, the Russians are no longer willing uh, to offer even a ceasefire and the evacuation of uh, combatants. They said uh, they prefer to just uh, destroy whatever uh, rebel forces are left in Aleppo, and therefore they are declining any ceasefire. Martin Chuloff. Can more be done, or is is there something that can uh, change this so that um, uh, there can be uh, more controls by neutral parties, say the United Nations, when it comes to uh, people uh, leaving those besieged areas of East Aleppo, or is it already too late? I think it is too late. Uh, did the diplomatic efforts have consistently failed? Uh, from from the get-go uh, in Aleppo and elsewhere in Syria, but Aleppo in particular has been a, a part of the country where suffering has piled on misery uh, time and again. Uh, we are seeing people get out to the west of the city now, the regime held west, but we weren't for a long time. And I, I must add my voice to Robert Ford's analysis there, though I spent a lot of time in East Aleppo over the years, and I, I saw the, 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 the cohort of the uprising change with every visit. But throughout them all, uh, there was a very clear and uh, an abiding fear in the East of what lay ahead at checkpoints. And most people were reluctant to cross because they didn't know or they couldn't trust uh, what was going to happen to them. And I think that that fear uh, continued right up until recent days or weeks when people have left en masse. But by and large, those who, 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 wanted to, who want to stay behind now are staying behind. And these are the last of the diehard fighters. Uh, there are conflicting reports as to whether the various rebels mixed amongst them are keeping them as any sort of a shield. But that's been something we'd looked at very closely over the last six months. And while we heard that frequently, it was difficult to support with what we were seeing on the ground. Uh, Human Rights Watch certainly saying that uh, it's something they're looking at uh, closely. They think it's credible the, the, that it is possible that they're being held uh, as shields in those area. Just and, and I have heard this from people who are inside, from uh, pro-rebel uh, uh, activists, saying that the rebel held the, the civilians as a shield. And it's not the first time. So, Martin Chulov, just break it down for us. Who exactly are the rebels right now still left? It's, it's difficult to know who, who exactly is in the remaining 10 percent of southeast Aleppo. But, uh, you know, we, we kept, there were four more or less more or less mainstream groups who were being supported over the last six to nine months by the Turks in particular, some backing from the Qataris. Uh, less backing from the Saudis than they used to be, uh, but they could get they could more or less get uh, ammunition, but not much else in. Uh, they were four groups who uh, who were the varying degrees of Islamists. There were there was inside Aleppo a uh, a, a, um, a pocket of uh, what we now call Jabhat Fatah al Sham. It used to be Jabhat al Nusra. Uh, Al Qaeda aligned in the past. It's disavowed those links, but it still remains a Salafi jihadi group. They were not strong inside the city. They were strong outside the city, though, particularly in the western countryside and to the north. And so it, it, it had become such a blend of, of disparate vested interests that it, it had been very difficult in recent months to distinguish one group from another. Uh, we're hearing reports, I'll put it to you, Peter Ford, that, uh, and this harks back to what Emma Suleiman was saying about it's hard to call this a victory all, uh, in so much as the fighting is going to continue, uh, that there might have been some kind of deal between Turkey and Russia over the, uh, the rebels being allowed to regroup north of Aleppo. I'm afraid this is uh, wishful uh, thinking um, by people who don't want to see reality in the face. Look, with the collapse of the armed groups in Aleppo, uh, the Assad forces now control well over 80 percent of the populated area of Syria. And there is no reason why they should not go on to mop up the remaining 20 percent. There is uh, relative peace in that 80 percent. There have been many hundreds of local truces concluded. 
uh, the journalists on the panel should disturb themselves and go and investigate what the situation is in the hundreds of localities, they will be surprised to find that things are settling down and there is no reason why things should not go on. As I mentioned earlier, there is absolutely no evidence that any ill has befallen the many thousands of civilians who, and even fighters who have uh, left or surrendered in Aleppo in the last 10 days. Emma Suleiman? Uh, well, I'd like to highlight that I'm not here to defend uh, the uh, the armed opposition because I'm totally against them. I'm here to talk about the Syrian from pure Syrian perspective because actually the civilians don't have any voice and they are the real victim in here. Everyone's defending their. I mean, uh, Mr. Mr. Ford and Mr. Ford. Everyone would defend. Uh, their own interest, the American interest, the British interest, but basically I'm here to defend the Syrian people's interest, who are the real victim in here. We all know the Syrian regime, and we all know what happened in the last, uh, in the last, and what was going on in the last five years, and how, and how people were taken, are trapped. Actually, the whole, the whole Syrian. Uh, but, uh, population but you're hearing is, Peter Ford there saying that 80 percent of the country now is peaceful and that it's under government control. Uh, it's not. We're not talking about 80 percent. We have. We still have. Uh, 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 80 percent of the populated areas. Of what? Populated areas. Uh, I don't have an exact figure. Uh, of course, I personally, I would like this to be true, and I would like to, to reach a, um, a political solution and an end to this war. Uh, and. And probably end this uh, Islamic opposition definitely, and 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 help. Uh, I mean, we have to find a way today to stop this war and stop the Islamic opposition and and the and the uh, and the Islamic militias fighting in Syria. Let's let's go back to something you said in the beginning. How many Syrians are actually fighting in Syria? Because the, from the regime end, uh, he like. Syrian, Syrian, the Syrian army doesn't have more than 60,000 uh, soldiers left. Most of the, uh, the troops fighting on the ground are from Iran, Hezbollah, Iraqi militias, etc. And from the other side, we have Daesh, we have Nusra, and we have other... Uh, 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 I mean, the moderate are still are, are a very, very small percentage, but they, they do have, uh, have non-Syrian. So this is, this is really... Um, I mean, the Syrian issue today has, has gone out of the Syrian hands long time ago and and I think it's enough we should leave it to the Syrian to handle uh, to handle it themselves and reach a reconciliation we know the nature of the Syrian regime today we have a, a, a humanitarian catastrophe in in um, in, in Aleppo and uh, uh, and and let's let's face it both regime and the radical uh, uh, fighters were taking the civilians hostages as, as they did before in Madaya and Zabadani but because because and, the and people the people know that they have nowhere to go the borders to Turkey are blocked. They cannot go to regime-held area because they know they will be prosecuted. And now they, they're only going to go to Idlib. All right, so it's, and, it, and Idlib is going to be next. Idlib's going to be next. We're going to talk about Idlib. We're also going to talk about the fact that while pro-Assad forces were closing in on Aleppo, they were losing to ISIS, the city of Palmyra, once again. We'll talk about that when we come back. Quick break. You're watching the France Van Gette debate.